All right, I bought this set, 100 pieces, solder sleeve heat shrink butt connectors. These are wire, waterproof wire splicing connectors that are going to be hopefully useful in repairing a little wiring problem underneath the uh, Mercury Mariner Hybrid. A couple months ago I had to replace the wiring harness that goes to the fuel pump driver module. And it was a cold wet day, I didn't want to spend a lot of time under there, and I used wire connectors on it to connect the wires together, which was really uh, not a great idea because uh, wire nuts there I am. Tell everyone. Wire nuts really aren't good for automotive electrical applications, especially in the outdoors and in the weather. So we really shouldn't have used those. And now that the wet weather in the winter is in full swing, one of them failed. I'm like, well, time to get off my butt, so to speak, and fix it the right way. So instead of trying to solder it, individual wire connections out there and then shrink wrap it separately, what I decided to do was try out these all-in-one solder and shrink connectors. And I'll show them to you real quick here. I paid $10 on eBay for a 100-piece set, which is basically this little box right here, which you can see isn't really that big. It's a little bit smaller than the palm of my hand. And I knew going into it that the 100-piece comment was kind of a marketing lie because a good... A good chunk of the parts in here aren't the uh, solder connectors. They're just plain pieces of shrink wrap tubing, which you don't even actually need when you're using these kind of connectors. But I'd say it was only you know, a small amount of money. It was $6 for this whole kit. So either way, that's not bad. What I ended up getting was five of the large connectors, 20 each, of the two different medium sized connectors and five of the small connectors. The rest is all this little pieces of shrink wrap tubing which I'll set aside I might be able to use for something in the future. But right now we're going to take our kit with these four different sizes and we're going to go outside remove the wire nuts and since I don't have a heat gun we're going to use a little stick lighter to apply the heat to them to shrink them down and melt the solder and I'll show you how that all works in just a second. Alright, it didn't work out so well. Now let me show you where I went wrong. The first thing wrong was I didn't have the proper tool, which would be this kind of heat gun like this, with the attachment that curls around back and collects the heat and concentrates it right on the wire. Instead, I tried to use the stick lighter, which did not go well. And I ended up having to use standard butt connectors, crimping them, and wrapping them in electrical tape for now. But let me show you why the stick lighter isn't a good idea. We're going to start with a couple of short pieces of 18 gauge stranded wire that I've stripped down and then we're going to just do a quick twist connect and then fold it over so that they're on one side like that and now we're going to get the large sized solder connector and we're going to slide it down the wire and over the connection so the solder circle is in the middle. Now we're going to use the stick lighter and apply heat to it to show you what happens most of the time when people do this because they're in too much of a hurry and they get that flame right on the plastic and you got to hold it a long time to get it nice and hot to melt that solder but you got to do it without turning the plastic black and melting all your rubber in the process. I say most people do it like I'm showing here. They get it too hot, too fast, and to hold it in one spot and melt the solder is okay, but it's not okay because you're ruining the plastic wrap and the waterproof seal around it, and it's just not as good as doing it with the heat gun, which is a nice, gentle, gradual process which shrinks everything down, melts the solder, and makes a good connection. On the other hand, I do have to say we did get good solder melting in this, and we got good penetration into our joint with it. And when I tried to pull it apart, it was almost impossible to even feel any movement at all. And I think it's a very tight connection the way we did this, but it looks bad. And I have my doubts if it's really waterproof or not. So if you were doing it like this, you would still have to wrap it or coat it or liquid tape it or something to keep the moisture and weather 
out of it. So follow the directions. These are pretty good product, but you need to use the heat gun in order to make it work properly. It's just too hard to control the amount of heat that you're applying with an open flame. But yes, I would buy these again and use them because they are a nice product. Now here's a better look with better lighting at the final result. And after I filmed this, I did cut the joint apart as best as I could. And there was a good amount of solder penetration into the copper filaments of the wire. So I'm confident that this is a good joint. It just looks bad and kind of burnt. I say I, I wouldn't feel comfortable with that. I'd like to wrap it again in some sort of tape or thing if I was going to leave that out and expose to the elements. But there you go. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.